Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, today we are going to be doing Esther 7 and 8. Uh, so let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, we thank you for your word, no matter what time it is, Lord. It is time to get into your word. And we praise you, Lord, that it's always available to us, Lord. Help us to learn how to be always available to you, Lord. That's something that I struggle with and I know a lot of people do. We do pray, Father, that you would help us to manage our time uh, so that you are the biggest part of it. Uh, we do pray, Lord, as we get into your word, that you would navigate our hearts and our souls through it and help us to glean the things that you want us to glean from it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Esther, chapter 7. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther, the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther, the queen, answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request, for we are sold. I and my people to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of king of king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Esther, chapter 8. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews' enemy unto Esther the queen, and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther, so Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is the month Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and the deputies and rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia and hundred twenty and seven provinces unto every province 
according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus' name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by posts on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries. Wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both the little ones and women, to take the spoil of them for a prey. <clears throat> upon one day, in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon, them, upon mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace, and Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joys and joy and gladness, a feast, and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. God bless the reading of his word today.